Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your wallets. We are going to be talking Bitcoin. This is a hot topic around chat. Uh, lots of requests for me to make this video. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, Bitcoin, this is going to be a good one. First of all, a little history about my experience in the markets. Um, I got involved in the equity market in the, the mid-90s. I was involved in mining stocks. Uh, those of you who are around around 95, the Brex era, you remember Brex? I'll tell you more about that in a second. Uh, I was also a very active t uh, day trader uh, during the tech bubble of 2000. Who remembers the brokerage day tech? I used to love trading through that. That was a good one. But let me get into it. First of all, we are looking at something called the NASDAQ here. Now, the NASDAQ is an exchange where a lot of tech companies are listed. And we're looking at what the NASDAQ did up until 2000. The reason I have this chart up is this. I was a very active day trader back in the day. And uh, around 3,500, I pulled out the NASDAQ. Now, I loved trading this stuff. Back in 94, 96, 98, it didn't matter what you bought. You just buy it and you hold on for a little bit and it's going to go up. Sound familiar? Uh, <laughs> my favorite story, uh, I have a couple of favorite stories. One of them is uh, Warren Buffett. Those of you who don't know Warren Buffett, he is the sage. He's the wisest of wise old school investors from the old days. And he hated the tech bubble, oh, sorry, tech bubble. We didn't call it the tech bubble back then. We just called it the, the rally, the tech rally. Uh, he hated tech stocks and he hated the tech, he hated the tech rally. And uh, he didn't understand it. He didn't want to be involved in it. And us young guys used to scoff, oh, Warren Buffett, he doesn't know what he's doing. We're making bank here. He's missing out, what a fool. Uh, I'm going to scroll this chart through in a bit and you'll see why it turned out he was not the fool. He was the smart guy at the end. But before we get there, a great story I like to bring up is how one of my friends, one of my close friends, uh, with zero experience in the markets, started getting involved in day trading too. Because everyone was buying because it was going up. And it was going up because everyone was buying. Um, I bailed out the markets around 3,500. I felt that the market was too high. Uh, I took my profits and sat back. And uh, my buddy calls me up. He goes, hey, Montoya, how much money did you make today? And I said, well, nothing. I've, I've actually pulled out the market. He goes, well, ask me how much I made. And I asked him, how much did you make? He goes, $3,000. $3,000. Holy crap. How'd you do it? He goes, well, I bought this stock called Pets.com in the morning. And then I... Simply held it till the next day, and then I sold it to make money. And I was like, wow, that's ridiculous. That's, well, congratulations. That's a nice chunk of money. The following week, he calls me up again. He goes, Montoya, guess how much money I made? I ask him, how much? $12,000. I go, what? what? Well, in my excitement, I bumped the mic. How did you make $12,000? I asked him. He goes, well, there's a stock called Amazon, and I bought it on Tuesday, and then I sold it on Friday. And I go, that's unbelievable. What did you, what metrics did you use to calculate this? Did you uh, study the fundamentals? Were you looking at the earnings? Uh, was it technical analysis? Was it quantitative? He goes, I don't know what any of that means, but I bought it because it was going up and then I held it and now I made money. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, okay? Zero experience and he had just made more money in two weeks than I'd made in the entire year. Uh, for no other reason than he bought because it was going up. Uh, now, you all see where this is going, right? You're starting to see the parallels, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to scroll forward here. And what happened was that, yeah, NASDAQ went up. It went to 4,800 almost. But what happened next is that. It started dropping. And then it did more. And more. And more. And more. So, while... He celebrated his profits. He also got stuck in the downdraft. The thing is, no one rings the bell when that happens. No one stood at 4,800 and rang the bell on CNBC saying, that's it, that's the top of NASDAQ. This dip here was bought heavily. Everyone saw this dip as a massive buying opportunity. This dip, this dip, this dip. Massive buying opportunities. NASDAQ is going to 10,000 this time next year. Get in now, don't miss out. Well, it took a long, long time for NASDAQ to get back. Let me scroll out here. 2008, 2010, 2012. It took until 2016 
to get back to those highs. And this is the equity market. This is not Bitcoin. Now, let me pull up our favorite chart, Bitcoin, BTC, USD. And let's switch to a daily chart. All right. Look familiar? It should. Now, I am by no means saying that this is the top for Bitcoin. In fact, when Bitcoin cracked over 10,000, when I saw this move here, I said, you know what? This is going to 25. It's going to 25K. There's no reason. Once it goes parabolic, once there's this kind of euphoria in there, there's no reason for it to drop until something terrible happens. So what terrible thing can happen? Well, that's the thing. That's uh, a thing we can discuss. Let me go all the way back to BreeX, which I mentioned earlier. BreeX was a mining company out of Calgary. They were worth a couple of cents. They were penny stock. They went to Indonesia and they found gold in the jungles of Indonesia in a piece of land they owned. The stock went wild. It went from one cent to 10 cents to $3.00. I think they peaked around $300 They moved off the Calgary Exchange, which was the crappiest, no offense, people in Calgary, the Calgary Exchange was like the crappiest exchange. And I think they moved all the way onto the NASDAQ. Was it the New York Stock Exchange? I can't remember. They had massive backers, uh, the big brokerages, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, Nesbitt Burns. Everyone was backing Goldman Sachs. I mean, everyone was, everyone was backing BreeX. Uh, and it turned out that BreeX was a scam. They, in fact, had no gold. They had salted the cores. They actually put gold in a salt shaker and it salted the results to make it seem as if they had gold. But that's how far they went. And so what marked the top of BreeX? Well, it was something which was unexpected. The head geologist, uh, his name was de Guzman, fell out the helicopter while flying over the Indonesian, Indonesian jungle. Yes, the head geologist of BreeX fell out the helicopter. When that news hit, selling slammed the market. Everyone called the brokers, go, I'm out, sell, 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 sell. And BreeX plummeted. Not only did BreeX plummet, but all other mining companies plummeted too. Not the big ones like um, Barrick Gold, but all the small spec of mining companies tanked with them. Why did I bring this up? Here's the thing. First of all, before I flip this over to uh, look at the other page here, uh, if you are long Bitcoin, let me just throw this in quickly. Take profits as it goes up. Nobody ever went broke taking a profit. I'll repeat that. Nobody ever went broke taking a profit. If you go to bed and you wake up and it's up 20%, sell a bit. It goes up 20% the next day, sell a bit more. Sell into strength, don't sell into the weakness. That's a mistake a lot of people make. And uh, back to why I brought up BreeX and other mining companies, uh, let me go to one of my favorite sites, coinmarketcap.com, and I could not believe the market caps I'm seeing here because I haven't visited the site in a while. Uh, I was very much into crypto back in 2013, 2014, and I've kind of let it slide for a while, but I came back and, all right, $303 billion market cap for Bitcoin. Ethereum, I like Ethereum. I think Ethereum is great. Bitcoin Cash, bah. Ripple, bah. Litecoin, always nice. I don't know who Cardano is. IOTA, I don't know. Dash, there's a lot of new names here. Monero, I know you. All of these altcoins and a lot of these shit coins will go to zero. Zcash, I recognize. Now, here's the thing with bubbles. When bubbles pop, everyone crashes, everyone goes down, and Bitcoin will pop. Now, the thing is, everything's going to crash. From the rubble, what comes up from there is what will survive. Amazon is one of the survivors of the, of the, uh, the tech bubble. Look where they are now. Uh, this is a natural reoccurring series of events that happen during all bubbles. And when Bitcoin goes down, and it will, all of these will go down with them. You are not safe. If you have piled money into Einsteinium, which is a great name, by the way, <laughs> these will tank harder than Bitcoin. They will be going to zero. I strongly, strongly advise you to protect yourself. Take profits whenever these things are up. Do not hold and wait for the exits. Because when people do come stampeding for the exits, now this is the big difference between regulated and unregulated exchanges. The Bitcoin exchanges, the big popular ones, 
uh, where there's Slovakia, there's I think in Bahamas. Because they're unregulated, there's no one forcing them to have restrictions or certain uh, circuit breakers in place. Uh, NASDAQ, New York, all these exchanges have circuit breakers, meaning if the NASDAQ drops, I think it's 7% from the previous day. Is that it? I can double check these numbers for you. Oh, please correct me if I'm wrong, post below. I believe if the NASDAQ drops 7% below the previous day's close, they will halt the market. They will halt the market and say, okay, breaks. Let's look around what's happening. Is there news? Is there a terrorist event somewhere, God forbid? Is there an algorithm gone bad somewhere? They'll find out what's causing the selling and try to basically calm people down so the exchange doesn't crash, so stocks don't crash. Bitcoin has no such mechanism, which is good and bad. Mm, keep hydrated. It's good because anyone can simply go buy Bitcoin right now, which is great. Right now you can go, throw 10 bucks into Bitcoin, no problem. There's no broker to go through, nothing. The problem comes when everyone wants to sell, when the big guys are like, okay, I want to dump 50 million, I want to dump 100 million dollars right now. The market might not be able to absorb that. The exchanges might crash. The spreads are going to be massive. The spread is the difference between the bid and the ask. When selling or buying, for that matter, are coming in hot and heavy, the spreads increase. So if the market is at 15,000, you go, oh my God, I want to sell. You punch in your order, sell at market, 15,000. By the time your order hits the exchange, the bid ask might be at 15,000, 10,000, and you'll get executed at 10,000 bucks. Uh, that is a massive, massive problem for people who have money in Bitcoin who will get shocked and they realize they can't actually get out in time when the cascade begins. And the cascade will begin. There will be a geologist falling out the helicopter for Bitcoin. I don't know what it, what's going to cause it. It may not happen now. It may happen at 25,000. It may happen at 30,000. Now, to be fair, Bitcoin has had plenty of so-called crashes in the past. Uh, 2017... 2016, you know, these all had crashes, was at 760, dropped down to 480. The difference this time being is that it's pretty much mainstream. Uh, you did not have the CME trading futures in Bitcoin before. You do not have, uh, just the other day, uh, is it Seabird Financial? S-I-B? Yes, I remember your ticker symbol. Seabird uh, Financial, which is a 50-year-old brokerage out of New York, you know, it's a nice brokerage. They have some clients that trade stocks for them. Uh, Seabird Financial announced that, hey, we're going to start trading cryptocurrencies. Boom! Off goes the stock, hits over $18. This kind of thing shows me that Bitcoin is mainstream. Bitcoin is saturated. T-C-U-S-D. Back to the Bitcoin chart. So, in conclusion, all I can say is the same reason that Bitcoin is at 17,000 right now is the same reason that it should be 25,000 next week and it could be 50,000 the week after that. But the same reason I say it could be at 50,000, it could be at 5,000 next week. That is why if you are long, lock in your profits. Take profits, sell into strength every time. You can't go wrong doing that. When the floodgates open, when everyone rushes for the exits, there's not going to be any time to place your order and get in at a reasonable price. Uh, you may not get the top. No one ever gets, well, someone gets the top, but 99.9% .9 of us will never get the exact top. No one's going to be ringing a bell at the top of Bitcoin. Take your profits. You'll never complain that way. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, there's both sides of the argument. If you are extremely long and positive of Bitcoin, what do you think could derail it? I, I heard an interesting argument on Reddit the other day for Tether. Now, if you don't know Tether, let me toss this in quickly. A lot of these exchanges for Bitcoin don't want to deal in US dollars because it leads to regulatory issues with bank. That's banking issues they run into. So instead of dealing with US dollars, what they do is they use Tether. Now, I can go take $10 right now and go buy 10 Tethers. I can then take these 10 Tether tokens onto an exchange and buy Bitcoin with them. The exchanges love this because they don't have to worry about dealing with US dollars and the regulations which follow. Now, the guy who actually makes Tethers, it's a guy sitting on his computer, can punch the numbers in, he can go and make 500 million Tethers right now and go buy 500 millions worth of Bitcoin with no actual US dollars backing it in any way. I found this very interesting. I wasn't aware of this before, but it is out there. This is a thing. 
could there be other things like tethers happening which could lead to Bitcoin being overly inflated and can cause a problem on the way down? It's, it's possible. I don't know what the top will be. You don't know what the top will be. But all we know is these euphoric moves cannot and do not last ever. So what are your thoughts? Where will Bitcoin go in six months, in a year from now? Will we see 30,000 before we see 10,000? How about that? And what is your favorite altcoin? I think Ethereum has a very bright future, but uh, not before a massive, massive pullback first. Let me know your thoughts below. Give me a thumbs up. Also, drive, uh, give me a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.